Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello. Welcome to video four. How do I fade in and fade out the viewport? This video is going to cover five different ways to fade in or fade out the viewport. There are more ways to do this. This is just going to cover a few of them. All of the nodes and videos and features we will be using in this how to instructional are covered in their own individual what are videos. Let's get started. The traditional way is to use our cinematic system. You have the matinee cinematic, which is our old legacy system. And then as a version 4.12, we have our sequencer system, which is now our new one. I'm going to cover how to use both. Let's go ahead and we have a matinee. We'll go ahead and open up our matinee. I don't want to convert this to a sequencer. Just going to show you how to do it in the matinee itself. Matinees have tracks. If we go ahead and we add a new director group, the director group is basically controls stuff. Inside of our director group, we can add another fade track. Our fade track will control the fading in and out of our camera. So if we go in here and we move our scrubber to let's say this point, have our fade track selected and hit enter, we'll add our new intro key. Go down to the next point, make sure our fade track is selected, hit enter, we now have a second key. The first key, we can set the value to zero, that means it's not going to fade at all. The second key, we can set the value to one, and that means it'll fade out completely. Now, if we were to play this right now, we're not really going to see much of an issue. Whoops, stop and go back and hit play. We're not going to see anything happen. With matinees, you really can't preview them inside of your sequence. So what we need to do is bring this up top. We'll go to our matinee actor itself. We'll go to play on level load and we'll hit play. We'll close our matinee. And then as you can see, it faded out. Hit play again and it fades out. If you want to, of course, reverse that, just make sure you have zero for your white value or clear, no fade, and one for your faded out value. So you could go from one to zero. That's how you'd fade using a fade track with matinee. Using the sequencer, which is this one right here, a sequencer, it is very similar, and actually fade tracks are much easier to work with. If we go to add, and then we go to fade track, it's gonna add a fade track. Now in here, you have this value right here, same as in matinee, zero is not faded, one is faded. We can just scrub through, we'll go to right here, add a new keyframe, go to here, add a new keyframe, and now we have two keyframes, start and end. We we'll go ahead and right click, we will properties, change the value to one, and now we have a value of zero to start and one to fade out. Now the nice thing about sequencer is if you try to get it to cooperate with you. You can actually preview these inside the editor and it's gonna go ahead and show you the result. Now right now, I don't have a camera set up, so I'm not really gonna see anything when I do this. If I was to add in a camera with my fade track, I could see it fading in and out. To use the sequencer, you would basically play it back. You can use any of the sequencer nodes. So if you've used sequencer, you should be able to use the fade track to add a fading of in and out. Now the next most least common ways are to use the fade nodes that are part of the camera manager. If I pull up this blueprint, we actually have a node called start camera fade. Most of the time, you won't know this exists. If you type in fade, it doesn't show up. It's context sensitive is why, and it's part of the camera fades section. We actually have a few different nodes. The one we care about is our start camera fade. The basic settings are from alpha, zero or one, just like our sequencer, to alpha, zero or one, and then the duration. You can also adjust things like color, should fade, and hold finished, which I'll show you here in a second. Let me go ahead and drop this into our scene, and we'll hit play. And you'll notice it fades out. Actually, that is due to my matinee, so let me shut off my matinee, and let's try this again. We'll go ahead and hit play. And you'll notice it's going to fade out. And it fades out over five seconds because I told it five seconds. You'll also notice it pops back to white. And that's because I don't have this turned on. Hold when finished. Let's change this down to two seconds and hit play. Over two seconds it'll fade and hold on black. And of course you could just reverse this from one 
alpha to zero alpha so that way you fade from a black to white or of course you can change your color and it'll fade with a color itself assuming i actually change the color to something other than black like that there we go we got a nice little green fade so that's using our camera fade nodes it's connected to the camera manager and these are covered by themselves now we have two more not quite normal ways these are useful if you need to do something special. And this is using the UMG system. So we're going to start with the camera fade with just an image. Let me go ahead and hook this up in my blueprint so it runs. And we'll type in camera fade and we'll go with the animation version. If I run this, make sure my blueprint's out of the scene. There we go. Nothing should be running it now. You'll notice it fades out and it holds it black. This one's pretty simple. I have an image that covers the screen, and then I have an animation. And all the animation does is taking the opacity of that image and going from zero to one. So it's fading it out from no opacity to full opacity. Now the nice thing about this is because this is an image, you can of course put in, um, that was yeah, not a good one. Do I have any materials that would work on the domain? Um, I think I think this one works. Yeah, here we go. I think that one would work if I have set up right. I have the color set up wrong. There we go. So there we go. We could fade out in and out, assuming I keyed it right. Oh, you have to remember you're keying your image here properly, which I don't. But anyways, you could assign an image here. You know what? I'll show you how to do this. Let's go ahead and get rid of this image. Now I have no keys here. We'll move it up to this point. This is what we want, our image faded out. We'll hit add for the image. Um, let's actually do this one. We'll do red, green, blue, and alpha. There we go. Now we've keyed, whoops, I missed one of them. Now we have four keys in here for zero for everything, which again is ah, not what we wanted. We wanted that one for everything with the zero for alpha. There we go. We'll go over here to like one and a half seconds. We'll change this to one for everything so it's keyed like that we'll add some keys in here and there we go now we can fade out in with an image so we'll hit play and you see it fades out to an image like that so that is how you can use an umg image to fade out and of course fading in would be the opposite now our last one is going to be fading in with a material on an image so let me go ahead and set this one up to fade We'll go to the material. This one's a little more complicated, but this one lets you have full use of materials inside of your UMG. So using an image, we're using a material this time. If I open up my material, this one's pretty simple. We have a radial gradient, which is a circle gradient, and I'm driving it with a radius parameter. And I'm feeding that into my opacity. And then I'm feeding the color of that into a color multiplier so I can get black. What this means is, let me open this up and type in fade and we'll go to material and we'll run this. And when we run it, you see a nice little white from the middle and it fades out. And it's black because of this node here. If I wasn't to put this node in here, let's say we ran final color and hit play and <laughs> saved our material and hit play and then waited for our material to compile. We have a white. So in case you're wondering, that's why I'm coloring it black. I could always change that to any color if I wanted. But the point is we're using a radial gradient, which if you've never seen one before, let me change the default value to one. It's going to give us this right here. Oh, it's also black, so that's not helping. Um, ah, let me plug things like this for preview. There we go. A radial gradient, 0 0.5 is our default value, is a radial gradient. It is simply a round radius. So by changing our value here on the radius from zero up to something like four, we're filling up from the inside because we're animating it frame by frame. Let me put this back together and go ahead and go back to here. And all I'm doing in here is on the event tick because unfortunately there's no way to animate a float value and there's no timelines inside of UMG widgets. I'm just checking to see if we should fade. And you can, of course, trigger that however you want. And if we do, I'm using an F interp node to take the current fade amount to a target value of I'm doing seven. So it's completely 
non-see-through. It's completely opaque. And I'm setting the current fade amount value and then setting the scalar value, which is my radius value inside of here. And then I'm just repeating that until I get to a certain amount and then I'm telling it not to fade anymore. Of course, I am using a dynamic material. So I'm creating a dynamic material and setting that to my image itself. So my image gets this dynamic material and then I fade it. And the nice thing about this is you can always change this. Let's say your target was something like two and we hit play. Your nose is not gonna fade out all the way. It's gonna fade out slowly. So you have the ability to adjust your fading value on your material and your fading speed. You can make it even slower, for example. And this is all due to the fact that we're using a material to drive what our image is, and then we're using a value, scalar parameter, and an fnterp. So you could do something like, I'll just show you this before we shuffle off. We could do a linear gradient, for example, and UV, we'll do a V for the gradient. We'll do that for the opacity. We'll drive this into our multiply here. We will see what happens because I don't know. I haven't run it yet but it should give us a wipe. It's gonna wipe out from top to bottom because it's a linear gradient. And of course, there's other gradients in here. You can have different material effects. It's a material, so you have all the material domain nodes to create. This is a few examples of camera fading. Hopefully you can use it to give it a little bit more cinematic effect. I would personally recommend using the node version because it uses the built-in camera manager and it gives you your basic effect. But if you're using it for cinematic versions, make sure you use the correct cinematic version. And if you just want to make something more artistic, you of course have your materials and your UMG.